first preseason games in the books. Uh, what did you like? What do you think you need to correct about your performance? Oh, um, mainly thing I need to correct about my performance really just defensive foul trouble. That's the main thing with major corrections. Um, other than that, I feel like all in all, everything with, you know, the way we wanted it to, you know, we got out on the floor. It was our first game. We seen a lot of things that we wanted to see. And it was a lot of things out there that we didn't want to see that we have to make improvements on. But it's the first preseason game. We got a whole other staff. We got a whole other coach. So it's a lot of things that we're learning that's new. So it may take time. But the main thing, all in all, I felt like we came out and we did what we had to do, show everybody what we've been working on, and just we'll just come out and play ball. You are uh, very specific in your shot selection, usually it's in the paint. I've never attempted a three in the NBA. Just kind of what's your approach there? And do you ever plan on trying a three point shot in this game? Oh, uh, for sure. Sooner or later. But I really just do my I really just do my job, you know. I mean, I, I work on my jump shot and every now and then, you know, most of the time I work on my jump shot throughout all summer and stuff. But I mean, most of the time I just come out and I do what I have to do on the floor to be able to produce for the team. So if it push comes to shove, then I'm in that position to where I shoot a three or I shoot a jump shot. Any case scenario, that's when I'll do it. But, you know, if I'm never in that position, I'm not going to force it. That's my main thing. Daniel, were you guys back to running um, with your unit with TCP in there as opposed to Corey, or are you still running with him in practice? Uh, I believe he was back in the first little group since he's officially back. So, yeah. What's that like kind of running with him compared to running with Corey? Obviously, what do you think is different? Uh, I mean, I really, you know, haven't like pinpointed what it really feels like, you know, KCP is a def uh, defensive minded guy. And so is Corey. So it's, it's kind of a bit of a same, you know. Wes said uh, last week that there was still obviously a lot of teaching to do mm -hmm. this early on in the season. What's his style? What kind of teacher is he? Um, He's more of a vocal and to where it like really just triggers your mind to have you, you know, sit in a position to really just think on what he's teaching. You know, sometimes he'll just sit down and talk to you and be more vocal with it. And then sometimes it's more hands on when we're out on the floor or running through drills or going live, certain things like that. How does the um, communication feel for you tonight from the preseason game? Communica communication was great. You know, I feel like I could have did better in some, you know, areas of like where I was, like I'm calling out screens and certain, you know, agendas like that. Just the main thing is was just taking it one step at a time and learning from the mistakes as I go on. Um, Daniel, uh, Montrez seems very vocal out there. What mm -hmm. are some things that you might be learning from him? Be more vocal. Uh, <laughs> That's my main thing. Uh, Montrez is a guy that comes in with a lot of energy. Um, I mean, he comes off the bench and he's just tenacious on the glass. He doesn't take he doesn't take anything from anybody. He's not going to back down from any type of fight. So, some of the things that I really take from him is just coming out and doing the same thing at the start of the game. Um, we understand Denny Apia is I. Uh, Saturday is going to be the time to make debut. Um, what have you kind of noticed from him so far in camp and any differences from the brief time you were around him last year? Um, really, he just took his time to get back, you know, and he hasn't stopped working ever since. Ever since I have I came back to the facility and stuff during the summer and stuff, he hasn't stopped working since. So that's the main thing that I watched. He wants it more than pretty sure anybody else on the team because, you know, he wanted to be out there on the floor with us when he got hurt last year. So that, that was the biggest thing is just seeing him come back stronger. That was – you know, just really just for him locking in and one hand, he want himself to be better and come out and be with the team. You know, that's all I need for, you know, me, for somebody to pass the eye test for me. As long as you're ready to work, come in and produce for the team, you're all good on my team. Uh, one thing Wes had said last week was he knew that defensively things would get short circuited out there mm -hmm. when you're under duress. Did you, did you see a couple of examples the other night where maybe it didn't go the way it was drawn up, but you guys still figure out a way to get stuff. Mm, yeah. Uh, I can't even like really pinpoint. I can't remember because it was a lot of times where it did happen because, you know, like I said, learning a whole new system and stuff, it takes time. So really just throughout the game, I was really mainly focusing on just really just making sure I didn't mess up. <laughs> that was just the main thing. But um, yeah, for sure. I mean, I think Trez, he ain't went up. He got a block. Spence ran, you know, he, he talking on social media, say like ran a 4-3, but um, he ran a transition, passed it to Brad uh, for a wing three. So that was one that was one um, that I really just like stood out because mainly it was all over social media too. So <laughs> that was the other one. Um, but just seeing that, that lets us know that, you know, with a new scheme and everything, we can always adjust.
and it doesn't just, you know, if we mess up in one area, don't really just stop, keep going through. I mean, Trez got the block. He jumped from, like, the top of the restricted, I think. But, um, <laughs> you know, um, but with that being said, I mean, yeah, that was um, one of the main things that had stuck out to me. And it was, uh, it was other ones throughout the course of the game, but I really just can't pinpoint. Did you find yourself, you were, did you find that you were moving more than, than you had been in previous, you know, last year? Mm -hmm. Um, I feel like I was, but at the same time, I think it was a bit of the same when it comes to, you know, me going to set ball screens, going for rebounds, guarding the pick and roll, having to be a, like, have being in a position to where I'm switching on guards, certain things like that. So yeah, I would say it's pretty much the same. Mm. All right, Daniel, let's go to uh, questions on Zoom. Uh, we're going to take one from Neil. What do you think you guys have in terms of rim runners and, and guys rolling off the pick and roll? We got a lot. We got three versatile guys. You know, me, pick and roll dominant guy. You know, I'll shoot it whenever I get the chance. Trez, he comes in and he has high energy, pick and roll. He'll grab rebounds. He'll do everything. Um, with Thomas Bryant, I mean, he's a run the floor guy. You know, he'll still step out, shoot the three at the top of the key from time to time. Um, go in, get rebounds, block shots, just being uh, being the main three energy guys on the team. So for sure, you know, it's gonna be it's gonna be a real good season for us because we got three high, like we got two high jumping guys. I don't know. I think Trez is a high jumper. You know, I haven't really seen some of his bounce like just yet. He got a lob last game, but you know, once he once I see like a crazy dunk from him, that's when I can put him in the high bounce side. <laughs> but um, other than that. No, we got we got three real solid big guys. You know, that's not me, you know, got myself on the back, none of that. I'm just, you know, that's the only time you guys will hear me be cocky about myself. Spencer was talking about, you know, different guys, like their lob passes in different areas. How has that chemistry grown um, for you since you guys have gotten together? It's grown a lot as long as I set the screen. Um, most of the time, uh, just getting my just getting the guards downhill is always a good thing for me because if I can put as much, you know, attention on the rim as possible, bringing guys in. I mean, it opens up the floor, but just with the live, with the live question, you know, you can throw it anywhere with me, so. <laughs> well, me personally, I didn't play that much my first couple of years, so it was time for me to actually get out there and play. Um, just try to learn as much as you can, even though it's, it's a little different, I'm not gonna lie, than regular season, because most guys aren't playing this and that, but just try to get the best out of it and the most out of it. What do you think led to uh, what was a pretty good offensive game there for you in, in the, the opening? Just trying to make the right reads. Um, the way I play, I try to get my guys the ball when they need it, uh, find an open guy, and if I'm open, I'll take the shot. So just trying to make the right reads out there for my team. And uh, as a point guard, what do you think about just the, the pick and roll partners you have and, and Daniel Gafford and Montez and Thompson and Cole Thomas Thompson? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, all of them are lob catching bigs. All of them pop and shoot pretty well. So for me, I just got to try to get downhill and make something happen for them, whether that's drawing the big, throwing the lob, or kicking it out for a three or even a mid range jump shot. So for me, it, it makes my job a lot easier. Um, I asked Daniel uh, what type of teacher Wes is because he said he's you know, obviously still doing a lot of teaching and mm -hmm. stuff. He said he's like the type of guy who really uh, makes you kind of think about position and everything like that. Does that sound familiar to you? And what is that kind of, how would you describe him? Um, for sure. He's very, he's, he does a great job of communicating when he wants done. Um, in the league, that's probably the best thing for younger players or pretty much anybody. Communicate what you want done so we can go out there and do it. And he does a great job putting us in the right positions that he wants us and just teaching us what he wants us to do pretty much. Um, it started when, since we first got here, probably like early September, a lot of us were out here and he really had hands on with us. So it, it helped a lot how communicative he is. Sorry, it sounds really basic, but when you say he's good at communicating exactly what he commands, that is like he's very direct or he shows you? And, and it shows Both. You. Uh, he shows us, he tells us. Um, if we mess up, he'll stop the play, show us what we should have done better. Even in film, he, he tells us what we can do better, even if it's a good play or if it's a bad play. Obviously, he'll let us know, but he just makes sure as we know, we may he makes sure as we know what, what we're supposed to do out there. No, not yet. We watched a little film. Um, I messed up on a couple of defensive clips, but it's all learning. So he just obviously uh, <laughs> he told us that uh, we watched film and we just try to correct things that we messed up on in preseason.
that I'm old. Can you explain? <laughs> can you explain crypto to me? No, I can't. I'm sorry. <laughs> you have a teammate that's big into this. Yeah, I haven't asked. He explains it every so often, but I'm not really into that. Is it something that? Is it something you're curious about, or or do you give him the Heisman immediately and say just don't? don't? No, I'll for sure ask him about it probably here shortly and so you can explain it again but yeah that's, that's not my thing <laughs> all right so if you wanted to be paid in crypto is that something you would ever want to do maybe if i figure out what it is and you know how it works but right now i'm, I'm good with just the money <laughs> <laughs> how often is so often every so often like you just like, that like once a week you just like i mean i feel like everybody asks him pretty much every other week to explain it because he's posting about it on Twitter, Instagram. But hey, it's good for him. It's something he really enjoys doing and talking about. So that's good to have in your uh, back pocket. Hey, uh, Aaron, um, you had a couple of nice floaters in the game the other day. Uh, how big uh, is the floater? How big a component is the floater in your offensive arsenal? I mean, I just try to take what the defense gives me. Uh, I probably use it the most getting to the basket, but I can shoot a jump shot too or pass it. So I just try to take what the defense gives me and whatever opens up, I just try to make a read out of it and, and pretty much react. Is it a shot that you feel like you've had the phone like to continue to be effective in the league? No, I could shoot a jump shot and be just as effective. Um, it's just something I like to shoot, I guess. Then you looking, is he still tracking for Saturday? Uh, yeah, as of now, um, it was good to see him get through the whole practice, every single live segment. So it's a, it's a good sign. And I think it was good for him just kind of test it a little bit and uh, see where he was. Obviously, his conditioning is not where it needs to be, but that's to be expected. Uh, but he showed some flashes, and that's what we've been looking for. That's what we've been waiting to see. So I'm excited to uh, get him in the mix, get him uh, up, to, up to speed, and uh, we'll see how, uh, see how he looks on Saturday. And uh, what was it like just coaching your first uh, NBA preseason game? Is there anything about it that you feel like, you know, you look forward to kind of getting more used to? All of it. <laughs> From the start to the uh, to the finish. And then just through, going throughout the whole process. Um, it's different, I think, when as a lead assistant, you take over in the middle of the game or, you know, if there's a, an issue or illness and you coach that one game, you don't have a litany of other experiences, uh, the other responsibilities, rather, that uh, – that normal head coach op opportunity would would offer. So uh, just the, the whole process. Uh, but I honestly, I felt comfortable. And maybe that's because it was a preseason game, but uh, uh, it went well. Wes, did everybody go today to practice? Nothing lingering from the preseason game? No, nothing lingering. Everybody, everybody went. Um, when you went to Denver and had to become a deep, more defensive guy or whatever, what was that process for you like? Experts probably a little generous, so thank you. Uh, but I think it was just one of those things where you felt empowered. Uh, Coach Malone said, hey, take it and run with it. And um, you start looking around the league at, as far as some of the top defensive teams. What can you glean from each of those teams as it pertains to the personnel that you have? Uh, and we, you know, we spent quite a bit of time you know, picking and, and choosing, but you kind of settle on certain things. And, and now the application part is what takes a little longer. Um, and who knows, that's probably, you know, whether it's six months, two months, is it, is it a full season? I don't know. Um, but the time will tell. When you're picking out the things that you want to put in place, are you picking out the things, or I guess where's the balance between picking out things that you know will suit your players and things that you know you want to implement so you'll make the players kind of do whatever they need to do to get there? There's a balance to some extent. I think the, uh, the biggest thing is giving your guys a chance to succeed. Um, and it's got to be something they believe in. So it's something, you know, that, that they'll be best in as far as the process. But, you know, physically, are they able to do it? And I think it's tough to ask a player to do something he's just incapable of doing. I think you, you don't have the confidence to put yourself out there and try it. So it, it, there's a little give and take in that. But, uh, you know, there's some non-negotiables uh, as far as your effort, your energy, your communication. Those are easy. Um, but some of the schematics things are more applicable to who you have on the floor. Um, and your roster and, and the balance that you can kind of, you know, play in those two areas. Was there anything reviewing preseason tape that jumped out at you that you maybe weren't expecting to have to sense that you were like, oh, actually, 
Uh, not, not, not really. I think the two things that we talked about at length all preseason, all through training camp, was the rebounding and our transition defense. Those are two areas that we, you know, were lacking the other night. Um, and the transition wasn't necessarily off live ball turnovers. So it wasn't the fact that we were, you know, not taking care of it, you know. So uh, kept our turnovers down, you know, I think 11 turnovers, 14 points, you know, in general, that's not bad. But, uh, you know, some, some of it got away from us toward the end of the game. Uh, but those are plays I think we can look back on and look. Was it our, our offensive floor balance? Uh, were we being disciplined with our crash decisions? Uh, were we communicating as we transition back? And, you know, all these little things that we've kind of talked about and drilled, we didn't see carry over in that area. So it's, it's certainly the thing that we showed and talked about this morning. Um, and we'll continue to kind of ha hammer away until we see results. What were some other points of emphasis in today's practice? I know you mentioned it really today would be a cerebral day. Yeah, we, ha we had to kind of recap the other night. So not an extended um, film session, but poignant, you know, touching the pick and rolls, the transition, the offensive rebounds, things that really stood out. And it was slanted strictly to the defensive end uh, because I think although we did do some good things, there was, there's a lot of areas of, uh, that we can improve upon. Um, and then after that, after a day off, I think you have to just blow it out, get up and down, you know, push them a little bit, get some conditioning, get, get competitive. I think that's when you get the best of your guys. Um, so overall, it was good, good practice. Um, it, was, it was a good spirit, very competitive. Uh, and that's what we're looking for. You had said um, last week about that there will be times where it wouldn't wind up on the court the way you wanted it drawn up or the way you drawn it up. Did you see examples of that Tuesday where whether it was communication, just execution, it didn't start off well, but they figured it out enough to get, whether it's a stop or get a good shot, get a good look? Yeah, and I think that's one of those things where we preach it on defense, you know, that fly around mentality where you just keep coming. And we've given our guys plenty of latitude on the offensive end to read, react. That's just the nature of the game now. Um, don't play in a box. Don't play with a pattern mindset. All those type things that we preach, I think you can do it on the defensive end as well. So when there are breakdowns, and there will be, <laughs> you just have to get, keep coming, you know, and, and a little bit of communication and tons of multiple effort will usually cover up some of those mistakes. Did, uh, did you see... I mean, Trez was all over the place, but were there other guys that were showing you that multiple effort stuff, the multiple effort on defense that you want to see? Yeah, no, absolutely. And I think, the, you know, sometimes the effort is there. Your heart might be in the right place as, as far as wanting to provide help, but then you lack purpose. So you get into those overhelp situations, which usually don't end well. So there's a fine line with, hey, I'm going to fly around. I'm just going to be active. Uh, and that's great to a certain extent, but there's got to be purpose behind it. Otherwise, you're, you're putting your, your teammates in a disadvantage in most times. Did you see, was there uh, gambling that you need to cut out? Or no, it's just more overhelp yeah. where, where guys are trying, I think, you know, do the right thing by helping their teammates. But you wind up, once again, putting yourself at a de deficit because uh, you're bringing more help to the ball than that's needed, and which winds up opening the three and hurting you in other areas. Over to Zoom for some questions, Coach. We're going to start with Dwayne Rankin. Thank you. Coach, obviously you got plenty on your play going into this into this first year for you, but I want to ask about the, the non-basketball moves and the, what are things that you're looking to see in preseason and early in the regular season that, that lets you see that, okay, they're on top of this. They're, 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 if this is what they preached to us before the season and now they're following through on making certain calls. I think that centers, you know, specifically around the defense. Um, we talked at length about the level of communication we need. I think we'll get the effort. We've seen that. Um, but just the, the, that communication component has to, has to elevate. Uh, I think the other thing is seeing that first, that core group develop uh, a little bit more on-court synergy. And I, I think it's, it's one of those things where they just have to play more together. It's hard to do that in the preseason where you're trying to give everybody a look. Only have four preseason games to do that. So... Uh, it's important that we kind of make sure that we see those solid stretches now so we're not working through some hiccups as we as we get into, you know, the beginning of, this, of the regular season. Just following up defensively, how do you see that translating, though, 
to the non-basketball moves that's supposed to help the defense and making sure that the offensive player just doesn't get away with what they have been getting away with in the past? A lot of that's accountability. You know, I think it's, we've talked about it where it can't just come from us. And I think it's, we, we've talked about players owning it, you know, and they're invested in that process, then they got to be able to hold each other accountable where things are somewhat simple and consistent as far as scheme. There should be no misgivings about whose responsibility that was. All five guys on the floor should understand that where the mistake happened, um, who's at fault, and then, you know, how do we cover up, you know, after that point. Once you get to that point where guys understand and all five are uh, in sync, I think some of these errors and mistakes will uh, we'll, we'll see them start to uh, lessen. Let's go over to Chris Miller. Hey, Wes, without um, obviously having the full group in camp and this part of preseason, though, can you forecast the depth that you think you have on this team? Are you too deep at every position? I don't know if there's anything such as too deep. I mean, I think our depth, it's a weapon, so it's great. Um, but, you know, at times it might be a hiccup as far as guys don't see extended minutes. Um, but that's our job to figure it out. So I'd rather – have the guys we have, have the depth that we have and the flexibility to play the way we can, then not. Um, so I, I look at it as a, as a plus. And in terms of just the athletic part of, just having guys that just can compete with the next team athletically. I know this is your first year though, but in terms of your scouting this team in the past, do you feel like you have a, a, an elite athletic group that can compete with really, really anybody in the league? I don't know about elite athletic. I think there, there are some elite athletes on this, on this team. Um, I think collectively there, there's a, uh, a cerebral advantage I think we have. Guys who've been in uh, big moments, uh, play deep in the playoffs. So that there's that poise, veteran presence, I think that those guys bring. Um, you have that youthful, energetic <laughs> spirit, you know, with the younger core. Um, and then you got guys who, you know, do it every night. So we're going to lean on all those three areas. You know, at some point, any of those guys from one through 11 um, can help win us a game. So, you know, I think it's important that they, we, we value that and they, they understand the value they bring. It's not just on the top two or three players. It's, it's uh, our strengths in the numbers. Thanks, Wes. Appreciate it. Mm -hmm. We'll go over to uh, Neil. Hey, Coach, I'm curious what your philosophy is on, you know, watching the film. You know, obviously you guys have time right now where you can, you know, do it in a group setting. You know, later in the season, are you somebody that's like, okay, well, we're going to have our video guys send out clips to players and let them watch it on their own. What, what's the balance there and what's the pro and con of each? I think you have to hit them in a number of different ways. I mean, the group film sessions are great uh, because I think it's, it's a great learning tool. The individual sessions, I think you, you get a little bit more transparency. When uh, you talk to a guy, they're more apt to open up uh, and really kind of, hey, stop, go back. I didn't understand. You, you get a little bit more depth in your conversation when it's just one-on-one. -on -one. Um, the, the defense mechanism sometimes comes down, uh, which is great. I think at times you also the small groups, whether it's the bigs, put them together. So they're, all they're going to do is complain about the smalls and the smalls, vice versa. That's just the nature of it. Um, so I think there's opportunities to do do it a number of different ways, but, you know, keep it fresh, keep it different, you know, because I think if you always have to go over here in the theater room, which is it's a great place to, to watch film, but, you know, now it feels like a classroom and it's a long drawn out season. So you don't, you don't want to necessarily have that feel day in and day out. I think it loses a you know, little bit of its luster. So just trying to find different ways. Sometimes it's two or three clips on the, on the court before practice. It's hitting a guy on a plane, uh, any, any opportunity you can. And of course, we have the technology now to, to push clips out. So whether it's, you know, scouting tape, personnel tape, or even their minutes um, with notations, they can get that instantly and uh, you can kind of give in-time feedback. So it's a great use, uh, useful tool, but, you know, at times you don't want to inundate the guys to the point where uh, they kind of get that glazed look over their face. But uh, you still have to kind of hammer away sometimes and say, look, this is important. 